Hey there and welcome to this special edition of In The Labs with me, Becky. Now in this video, I'm gonna show you how you can create some real simple bunting that would look nice hung on your fireplace or as one long continuous string uh, on your wall. So in terms of the project itself, uh, I've used plywood here, I'm using quarter inch plywood. Um, we've got three simple toolpaths, we've got a V-carve toolpath to cut the letters out. Um, with the letters, because I am using plywood, it brings out all of the different layers, so it really gives it some dimension. And then we've just got profile toolpaths to cut the hanging holes and to cut the parts out. So I'm going to show you how we can finish this just by using a napkin. So we'll come to that later on. So let's have a look in the software at how we created this. Okay, so I'm using VCarve here and I'm setting up sheet size, so 96 by 48. Material thickness I'm using is a quarter of an inch. I'm gonna start by creating a rectangle to create the bunting. Setting that with a height of five inches and just over three inches for the width. And then with that, I'm going to put that into node edit mode where I'm then able to insert a midpoint so that I can take both the left and the right hand lower nodes and shift them up using the arrow keys to create that V shape at the bottom to give us that bunting shape. So then I create the slots that I need to hang um, the bunting. So giving that a width of 0.15 and a height of half an inch. That's the height of the, of the thickness of the ribbon itself. So you might want to change that according to the ribbon that you use. And then I'm just uh, moving this in position relative to the top left hand corner. So I'm going out by 0.3 down by a quarter of an inch draw a line through the center of the flag, uh, in which case I can then make use of both of those vectors where I can flip that about the line so I have a mirrored version on the other side. Then we just come to create the text. So I'm just creating one letter here using the Bernard MT condensed font. I'm just going to type in the letter M uh, and then align that uh, to the center of the flag itself. Okay. Then uh, well, what I did want to do is I wanted to just uh, shrink this in terms of the width, but I wanted to keep the height, so I altered that uh, and then just shifted uh, the letter in position to the bunting where I thought visually looks best. With all of that, now I'm happy with that one bunting, I can create all of the other flags. So we've got 14 in total, giving it a gap of one inch between each one. So you can see we've got them all there. And it's simply a case of selecting the letter, going back into the draw text tool, where I alter the letter according to the letter that I want until ultimately I spell out um, Merry Christmas. Okay, so that's just a nice uh, quick way of ensuring that everything is going to be the correct size and shape how we want it to be, uh, but we're just altering the letters to what they need to be. And so with that, we're now ready to lay that out. Okay, so I'm going to take all of those vectors and we're just going to use the nesting tool. So we've got a tool diameter of a quarter of an inch clearance, uh, 0.2. So the tool diameter is the tool that I am using. So that is the quarter inch in there. I've got a clearance and a border gap, 0 0.2, 0 0.4. Rotate parts to find best fit. I've got that 90 degree step. Um, we're doing that along the X axis and then I just want one lot of copies here. I'm going to go ahead and press apply uh, and then we can preview that to see how that looks uh, and that's how it's going to lay that out for us. Okay, so we'll go ahead and press OK and now we can move over to the toolpath. So we're going to use this option here to switch over to our toolpaths tab where we can begin uh, applying toolpaths to each a part of the bunting. Okay, so to help ourselves out, I'm just going to group it, all the letters together, all of the hanging holes, and then all of the cutouts. So to do that, we're just gonna simply hold down shift whilst selecting all of the letters like so, and then we could press G on the keyboard, that will group them. Uh, then what we're gonna do is we're just gonna go and select all of the uh, outer profile. So again, I'm just holding down uh, the shift key as I select through each of those flags. 
like so and then press G and then I'm just going to select everything but then shift to deselect the outer profiles and shift to deselect the text and then I'm able to pick up all of the hanging holes which I can again press G on the keyboard to group them. Right and so in terms of uh, our material setup so here I'm going to work with quarter inch thickness, XY position is in the lower left hand corner, I'm setting my Z0 on the top of the material uh, and then I can go ahead uh, and create my toolpath. So we're going to start by creating the VCarve toolpath. So we're going to select the letters, go into the VCarve toolpath. The tool I'm going to use is a 90 degree quarter inch V bit. Starting that at the top of our material, just call that VCarve and then go ahead and press calculate and then we can preview that toolpath so that's how that would look. And we can go on to think about the hanging holes, so I'm going to select the hanging holes this time, we're going to go into the profile toolpath. Okay, so we're going to cut all the way through our material, so a quarter inch in there, we're going to select our tool, so in this case I'm going to use the eighth inch tool, so we're going to use uh, this one here, the 46200, uh, go ahead and press select. I'm going to machine this on the inside of those vectors, uh, and then we're just going to give that a name, we'll call it profile hanging holes, and then we'll go ahead and calculate that. So this is the path that that tool path is going to take, so that's what that would look like, and then we can close out. And now we can think about uh, creating the actual cutout, okay? So we're going to select the outer profile here uh, and then we're going to use the profile toolpath. Uh, so you're going to see in the video I did uh, initially um, I didn't have any tabs in place and I was using double sided tape but really just for good measure I'm going to give you the file where the tabs are included um, so that you've got good hold down here. So we're going to cut all the way through the material. Uh, this time we're going to use a quarter inch tool okay so I'm just going to go through my library and I'm going to select a quarter inch compression bit. So with the compression bit we have both upward and downward cutting parts of the tool so the majority of the tool will be um, downward and then the bottom of the tool actually cuts upwards so this just gives you a real nice finish on both the top and bottom surfaces of your plywood so we'll go ahead and we'll select that tool okay so here I'm going to do that in one pass um, if we go to the edit options we can see we've, we've got a pass depth here of a quarter of an inch again ensure that it's safe and appropriate to do so for your setup I'm machining on the outside here where I'm going to add tabs to the toolpath okay I'm just going to go with a very small length of 0.1 we're going to have a, a thickness of the tab of 0 0.07 so it'll be very thin but it will be just enough that it will hold it in place uh, we can add ramps and leads, in which case I'm going to add in ramps, we're going to use a smooth ramp, so it's going to ramp into our cut rather than just plunge directly down. Um, we're going to also use leads as well, so it's going to lead into the cut in a circular motion where we want that ramp on the lead as well. So this is just going to help with the wear and tear of the tool, it's also going to help with the, um, the final cutout as well. Okay, so we're just going to call that one profile cutout and then we could go ahead and press calculate. Okay, so it's prompting me that we've requested to add tabs, but we haven't actually specified where they are. So we're just going to go and okay that. We're just going to go back in there uh, and then we're going to go and edit the tabs. Okay, so we want two tabs in there. Uh, we're going to add the tabs. It's going to add them left and right, which I'm happy with. Uh, so we can close out there and then go ahead and press calculate. Uh, and then we could go and preview that toolpath. And then we can see we've got uh, those tabs in position. Okay, so at this stage we're ready to go ahead and save out those toolpaths. So I'm just going to select all of those toolpaths, use this option here to save the toolpath. We're going to save visible toolpaths to multiple files, save that out and then we'll go ahead and run that on the shop bar. Okay, so to start with I initially used double-sided carpet tape as my preferred hold down method. Uh, without using tabs for the bunt in. You can see I've sparingly placed that in position and then I've screwed and secured the material down to the machine bed. First toolpath I'm running is the V-carve toolpath and I love V-carving into plywood. 
because I love to see those layers uh, revealed in the finished cutout. It looks really nice and it gives it a little bit more dimension. Next up, using the eighth inch tool to create the hanging holes that's going to uh, enable us to thread ribbon through the bunting in order for us to hang it. Third and lastly, we're looking at the cutout uh, toolpath using the profile toolpath. Uh, and here you can see, oh, there's lots of cutouts you've already done there, okay? So this is where I've changed it up. I figured out my hold down, the tape that I was using wasn't that great, so I kind of shifted the design up, uh, recut it, but using tabs to hold that in place, just to get those uh, cut out safely. And it's just going to require a little bit of sanding just to remove the witness marks of those tabs. Okay, so here I'm just using a, a chisel and a hammer just to kind of just detach those very small tabs from the bunting and then I'm able to just sand all of those tabs off. Uh, they're only small tabs so it wasn't too much of an issue. And I'm just going in with a file just to clean up and tidy up those hanging holes. Now for the decoupage, so I'm using a napkin, so you want a napkin that has some kind of Christmas design and I'm closely cutting the actual pattern um, in the napkin to whatever it is that I want to cut it to. Then you're going to peel off the top layer of the napkin where the print is uh, and then with the Mod Podge on the plywood we're going to press that top layer down and then I'm just going to finish that with a little bit of water just to really press it down uh, and to hold it in place. Once I've done that then it's simply a case of taking the ribbon and then simply threading that through uh, through those hanging holes um, so that everything is in place. So here is the finished bunting hung up and like I said at the start of this video it would look really nice against your Christmas fireplace. So if you fancy having a go at creating your own version of the Christmas bunting then simply head over to your Co account where you can download the project files from there. And if you like this video then give us a thumbs up and if you've not yet subscribed to this channel then hit the subscribe button for instant updates on the latest videos that you'll be receiving. So thank you for watching and happy making.